city ruined bases as seen on my Imperial Fist guys. Finally doing this, let's get into it. Uh, the bases I'm building here, I'm building sort of a cartoon look to them, not going very realistic with rubble and uh, dusting effects and all that. Uh, so I wanted something kind of clean, fitting with a more cartoon look of the Space Marines. Starting off with some epoxy putty, I am using Magic Sculpt, my preferred epoxy putty. Uh, you can do the exact same thing with uh, Neatite, Green Stuff, Milliput, or any various sort of two-part epoxy, but uh, mix up a good batch, enough to cover all the bases. You're probably going to need less than you actually think you need, and then we move on to part two. Next, take a very small amount of epoxy putty and just smoosh it on to the base. Uh, again, you need a lot less than you actually think you do because we want a very thin, uh, not paper thin, but uh, somewhere between a penny and a piece of paper, I'd say. Uh, so not quite the thinner is better, but definitely you want to go thin with this. You do not have to cover the entire base depending on uh, the look you're going for. If you want less ruined, I would cover more. We want the putty to be as even and flat as possible. So now just using a little bit of water and my fingers to smooth out the putty and then get rid of any uh, fingerprints and just try to keep it for the most part even. Uh, that's one of the benefits of using actual epoxy putty like Magic Sculpt here. I could thin it and smooth it with water. If you're using Neatite, uh, you're gonna have to add some sort of uh, lubrication to it, petroleum jelly or lip -a balm or any of the other various things that one uses to smooth out neatite. Next, we break out the base stamps. I'm using a Happy Seppuku tile base stamp here. Uh, first, lubricating the stamp with a little bit of super glue accelerant. I actually found that works pretty good uh, as a uh, bit of lubrication that dries uh, without leaving any residue and just press firmly down on the bases to get our texture and do it for all of them. Uh, if you don't have a base stamp, that's fine. Uh, there is a technique that I used previously that I'll put a link down below. I can do the exact same thing using little bits of uh, styrene card. Or you can also, if you want an actual road, an asphalt road, uh, just take some very heavy sandpaper and use that to press down instead. A lot of various ways you can do this. Now we can start adding the rubble to our ruined base. Normally I would attach the figure before going uh, on from this point. However, since I'm trying to show you how to do the base, uh, I don't want to put the figure down, so that would make it more difficult to see the base. So, moving on. Uh, starting off with some Verlinden 135th scale bricks. Uh, they're very just very small plaster cast bricks. Uh, 35th scale is a bit large for bricks, but there's various size of bricks in the world. We can just call these cinder blocks. Uh, but just uh, attaching a few here and there with super glue. On occasion, I will uh, break them apart with a pair of clippers for some broken rubble. But uh, just add a couple wherever you feel like it. Next, we are going to add some evergreen H columns or I beams uh, to represent I beams broken from buildings and what's not. Uh, adds a lot of character to the base. All you have to do is just clip off a small section and then you can uh, kind of beat it up just using a pair of pliers to twist it and clippers to take a few chunks out of it. Uh, when you put it, you don't want to just lay it onto the base though, that's the issue with a lot of the stuff I'll be doing here. Uh, you want to more insert it into the base. Uh, make it look like it's coming from underneath the ground, uh, something's buried, uh, rather than just lying it on top of the dirt. Uh, that's the real key to making a base look good. Uh, don't make it just a flat surface with stuff lying on it like it's a plate or something like that. Uh, work the pieces in, work them underneath, tell a little story, even with every little base. Another thing you can use on bases is some metal tubes. Uh, this is a aluminum tube. You should be able to find the same place you find uh, brass rods and tubes and what have you. Uh, the aluminum is a bit softer than the brass to bend. And I'm just going to take it and bend the hell out of it, essentially. Uh, beat it up. I can 
you could drill some holes in it and then uh, clip it off or cut it off and then attach it to the base for you know fuel lines or uh, natural gas lines whatever plumbing uh, that's been broken and jutting out from uh, the ground underneath and the last thing we're going to be using here is plastic crap you have a lot of this lying around if you do games workshop models uh, they give you all those extra little pieces that you decide not to add uh, they make great base decorations uh, so just clip them off uh, and you can do a little damage to them if you like again uh, the key with uh, all this is you don't want to just lie it on the surface of the base cut off a bit make it sticking out of the dirt or sand it down at an angle so it's partially buried uh, just add a little character to it do something the final thing to do is to glue down a bit more rock and grit uh, you want to start with your largest grit and then move to the smallest so I am starting off with some Gale Force 9 medium grit just a few sprinkles here and there and then uh, we will cover it with some Games Workshop sand uh, you can add it in fact you probably do want to add it over the epoxy tiles that we added before don't just think of that as the line where you have to stop uh, you can apply the grit over that uh, you just want to make sure that the grit is not applied evenly. Don't do straight lines with it. Try to do a few blotches here and there on the tile. Make it look a bit more natural, a bit more realistic. Finally, we can start on the painting. And we are starting off with some Vallejo Panzer Aces track primer. Uh, I like this one because it's a... It's a brown, but it has some grayish undertones to it. And we are putting it on with a, I wouldn't say brushing it on, this is more of it like a extremely thick wash because we need to slightly thin down to get into all those nooks and crannies and cover really well. And uh, so this is gonna be very thick. Let it dry completely about an hour before moving on because um, we're applying it so thick and watery that it's gonna soften some of the glue. And if we work on it too fast, uh, that glue is all going to come up and all that sand is going to come up uh, when we move on to the dry brushing. So uh, let it dry thoroughly, apply a second coat if needed. Next we add a little bit of Alejo model color khaki and do a heavy dry brush all over the base. And then a lighter dry brush using just khaki. For the concrete uh, street or sidewalk, whatever it is, um, using Vallejo model color dark sea gray. To highlight the gray, I'm adding Vallejo model color beige and doing this twice. Uh, first time with a more heavy brush stroke uh, along all the corners and then adding a bit more beige right here and uh, being a bit more precise, cleaning it up so we get a nice clean highlighted edge on each tile. The bricks I am painting with Vallejo Game Color Cold Gray and then highlighting them uh, with beige, the same color I used on the street. Uh, I had in my mind the idea that this was a, a city of 100% concrete. Everything is concrete um, or whatever space concrete they have. I'm sure they have something in 40K universe, but uh, I wanted the, the the bricks pretty much the same color as the street uh, with very slight variation. You, of course, can pick whatever color you like. Do red bricks or that off yellow cinder block color. Um, Actually, I guess khaki would be a good color for that. Hmm. For the rusty metal bits, we are using a equal mix of Vallejo Panzer Aces Dark Rust and Light Rust. And then uh, we're going to highlight it by uh, using straight light rust and doing it while it's still wet because I kind of want to blend it in. Uh, 
rust is not a solid color. It's not a layer of paint. It changes, it varies, even on the same item. So blend it in a little bit while it's still wet. Uh, gives it a bit more realistic look rather than just doing a, a standard one color highlight to it. Now we add the grime using a mix of Vallejo inks, sepia mixed with a little bit of black, uh, thin to about a medium consistency, and just slopping it on, cover everything with this mix because we want everything dirty and grimy. On the tiled street sidewalk thingy, um, trying to clean it off a little bit, uh, I don't want any pools on the tiles, I want that a bit more uniform, and also wherever it pools on the bricks or someplace where it pools too much, just clean it off with a, a dry brush. And then the last thing to do, just taking some very thin black paint and going in and painting all that recessed area between all those tiles. Just a smooth hand, very easily done. Uh, you can use uh, a black ink wash if uh, your hand shakes a little bit, uh, but I prefer the nice, clean, more stark line of actually painting it in. But with that, we can go ahead and attach the figure and uh, call it quits. And there we have it. Our bases are all done and looking nice and rubbly and ruiny. Uh, this is just one way of doing things. There, you have so many options when it comes to making things ruined. Uh, you can add just all sorts of stuff to it and paint it whatever color you like. Again, this is just one way of doing it. Uh, the only thing I would recommend is uh, what I mentioned about having things inserted into the base, not just lying on top, I think is mainly key. Um, that includes the figure itself. Uh, I didn't add the figure to this, and uh, if you're following along and doing the base separately, you would attach the figure on top. The problem with that is putting the, once you put the figure down, especially if you're putting it in that um, gravelly area, it's going to be floating above the gravel, which does not look realistic. You want the figure to be inserted into the base, just like all that terrain you added. So ideally, you want to attach the figure before you add the gravel and then use the glue and gravel afterwards. So it makes the figure look like it has some sort of weight. It's sinking slightly into the ground like a normal person would, or even a guy in a giant mech suit would even be doing more so. But hopefully this gives you some ideas, and uh, see you next time, shall we? Bye-bye.